Hello again. OK, so we're going to begin now. So uh, before we kind of get into the real kind of meat of the material, um, we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to do a few videos that are just kind of going to get us back and used to programming and processing, and where are we, and what's going on. Ah, and I left the fluorescent lights on. Turn those off. Um, and uh, uh, just to get us kind of going here. So what I want to start with is actually um, a simple example. It, 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 what, we're gonna, the, the first half of this whole video series is going to be about programming a physics engine. Boy, it's really loud in the hallway. Quiet, quiet down there. OK. Um, but uh, um, so uh, before we, we're going to formalize our understanding of motion. We're going to look at vectors. We're going to look at forces. But to even give us a place to start, I think something we could look at would be a random walker. So I'm going to move over here for a second. And so here we go. Here is a very simple processing program with a random walker. It's been running for maybe uh, 15 minutes now. We could kind of find the, the little, our little friend somewhere in here. Do you see where he is? Oh, there he is. It's down. I don't know if it's a he or a she, but it's down here somewhere, kind of moving around, randomly walking. So um, what's going on here? We have a program that clearly has a variable called x and it has a variable called y. Those variables are storing the x, y location of this little dot that's moving around the screen. And you can imagine somewhere in the program, we're saying, hey, draw an ellipse. Or maybe it's a point. Maybe it's a line. Whatever it is, I'm going to say ellipse right now. And maybe it's a tiny one at that location. The two pixel by two pixel wide location, we're drawing that circle. So. What is it about this example that is the reason why we're talking about it? Well, somewhere else in the code, right? If, we, if this was our code, first of all, x and y have no initial value. But let's say they got initialized. Let's say we're doing this ellipse and draw over and over again. We just have this little tiny circle static on the screen in one place, never moving. But it's not. It's this little dot. It's moving. We zoomed in. We saw it move. It's moving. Why? Because somewhere else in the program are written these lines of code, x equals x plus something, y equals y plus something, <laughs> some thing. And by the way, this something question mark, this is the question we want to answer in video after video and example after example over this entire series. Every program that we're going to look at with more and more sophisticated motion really just comes down to putting more and more interesting stuff in here. How do we change that object's location over time? Well, so the other thing about this that I've written here is we have, we have an organizational structure that we need to live by in these examples. And it's object-oriented program. Now, let's try to remember something about processing first for a second. So if you recall, processing has these two when you work, Every time when you first started learning, you write your first processing sketch, you're always there writing, oh, OK, here we go. Void, I don't know what void means. It's very weird. Of course, now hopefully you do. Void setup, curly bracket, open, close, curly bracket. Void draw, curly bracket, open, close, curly bracket. This is. This is something that you're probably, hopefully, very, very used to. If you haven't done processing before, setup, which is where all the code that happens at the beginning gets triggered, and setup, draw, happens over and over again. This is our main animation loop. If we move something, draw something, move something, draw something, we see it moving on the screen. So traditionally speaking, these variables might be declared at the top. We might initialize them in setup. We might do this and draw. We might do this and draw. And that would be our program. However. We need to live in an object-oriented world. Well, we don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to do any of this. You could really just shut this off right now. But if you want to follow me along here, my examples, these examples, they're going to be object-oriented. It makes a lot of sense for them to be object-oriented. We want to think of the things that move around our screen as an object. So uh, we want to create this object. Let's call it a walker. We're going to declare that as a variable. The name of the variable is w. The type is walker. Walker is going to be a new walker object. And then that's what we do at the beginning. We set up our object. And then in draw, maybe we call like a function called walk. And maybe we call a function called display. What does that mean? This is the structure we want to that we're going to have. We're going to be 
declaring objects, initializing objects, and using those objects over and over again in draw. Now, where, did these, where, where does all this stuff match up to? Well, if we're going to have an object of type walker, we have to declare a class of type walker, Texas Ranger. And those curly brackets go all the way around. Each walker has its own x and y. Each walker, perhaps, has a function, well, I guess they called it walk, called walk. Each walker, perhaps, has a function called display. So we can see here, object-oriented programming, what is it? It's data and functionality together. A walker is a thing that has a location. What else is a walker? It's a thing that can move that location. It's a thing that can display itself at that location. That's what we're describing here. We forgot that here we need to have a constructor, right? The constructor is the object's method where, uh, that constructs the object, where, where all of it's, it's, it's kind of like the object's setup in a way. Processing has a setup, which is where you do all the stuff that happens at the beginning of the processing sketch. An object's constructor is its own setup. It's all the stuff that happens when you first make that object. Boy, that was just thrilling and exciting, and nobody can believe that they're watching this amazing, compelling video. Oh well, this is our life, you know. Here we are, drawing things about constructors. Okay, um, so this is the structure we want to get used to. But what are we doing? We're doing a random walker. What is a random walker? Well, let's go back and look at our little random walker here again. Uh, press that button again. Here I am, and let's zoom in on him. Him? I don't like you calling him a him. I'd like to. Um, I want to redo this video just to be less gender specific. Um, you, you can't really see it over there, but but this this walker is a traditional. I would say he's a very traditional. <laughs> I can't, can't stop it. This random walker is a very traditional random walker. I didn't really want to erase all this, but it's too late. So oh, and I'm. You can't see me erasing it. I'm, I got to get better practice at this. Oh, there we go. I'm over here now. Oh. Now I've also made this video seven minutes. It's too long. Ugh. Should I do it again? I'm just going to keep going. I'm probably going to redo this video later. <laughs> OK, so here is an xy location. The traditional random walker, sort of basic first example, you could say there are only four options. Move up, move to the right, move to the left, or move down. Meaning we're saying, ah, this is one option. This is another option. This is another option, and this is another option. Either x changes by 1 or negative 1, or y changes by 1 or negative 1. Four options, each with an equal probability. 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. Let's go see how that's implemented in the code. Uh, now I zoom back out, and if I open this up, I've got the code. And we can see here, look, this is exactly what we talked about. A walker object, a new walker object. Walker steps and walker draws. I, I, over there, I said uh, walk and display, and now I'm saying step and render. I'm scrunching your code. OK, so now if I go over here to walker, we can see, aha, the walker has two of x and a y. It's initialized in the middle of the screen. The render function draws it as a point. And now, look at this. We're using the random function and processing to choose one of four options, x plus plus, x minus minus, y plus plus, or y minus minus, and we're keeping the walker on the screen. This is your first exercise. Create a random walker and have it do something slightly different. Is it purely random? Is it based on probability? Is it using Perlin noise? Does it like to move to the left? Does it like to go in spiral patterns? What kind of motion can you do just with this object-oriented structure? Take this code, mess with it, just work on the step function, and see what you can make. In the next videos, we're going to look at techniques in probability and techniques in Perl and noise, and we're going to see how those might apply to this random walker. And with that, this is the end. Scene finished. Done. Oh, that, I, I need a button that stops recording. I have to go over here. It's very awkward. You're watching the end of this for no reason. And click the mouse. Goodbye.